Hey guys, welcome back. Jim here. Recently, I put out a 30 minute demo video that's comprised of actually three hours of material, all squeezed in into 30 minutes. Now I'm releasing the three hour video in 30 minute segments, the full content of the acrylic bull skull painting I did. If you like this video, go down below and you'll see that Patreon link. Click that and become a member for some cool perks. So with no further ado, let's get started on this first video. I was sore this year. Just was, you know, it's hard to see. So that's why my eyes are all glazed over. I'm squinting all the time. So from here on out, I'm just going to have to go by the way of the big Lebowski. Welcome back. This first painting I'm going to do was inspired by a friend of mine. Uh, he asked if I could paint a cow skull with an Indian motive, you know, like feathers and stuff on it. And uh, I was like, yeah, I could do that. But I need like some kind of photographic reference because if I did it off the top of my head, if I'm in abstract, I can do it. But I want it to look like a cow skull. So there, you can like go online and search for cow skulls, but you gotta be careful because a lot of it's uh, like trademarked or registered or licensed, you know, and you get in trouble by using those uh, images. But there are sites out there that provide license-free uh, images for reference for artists. And it's searchable, there's a lot of images on there. It's and uh, one in particular is called Pixabay. Um, Pixabay.com. You can uh, just go there and type in cow skull, which I did, and uh, oh, this is what came up. Okay, so I got a good reference photograph now. I can get a good idea as far as color and stuff. He wanted a blue background, right? And so I'm looking at the skull and it's bleach white and all that. So the background needs to be dark. You know, you need a contrast. So I, you know, I put that in my mind, you know. And, uh, but anyways, so um, I saved that image, downloaded it, printed it out. And we're going to use that as a uh, template to trace on the image. There are other ways to do it, like the grid. You know, you got the... Uh, like three lines and three lines do the same thing to the picture so and then you can use the, the, the photograph as a guide and draw it out by hand um, or you could project it with a little projector draw it that way a lot of ours do that that's perfectly fine or uh, you can uh, pre-draw it or trace it on uh, a piece of paper and transfer it from there onto there or you just do it straight, just straight like a lot of artists do but for this particular lesson, we're just going to uh, use this traceable. That way you can like, uh, don't have to worry about drawing it and just trace it on there and then uh, we're just painting it, right? Okay. Um, so anyways, we got our cow skull and uh, I saw a couple references to some skulls with uh, like a leather on each horn, like a sheath. And uh, some cord hanging down with feathers on it. So we're going to do that as well. Anyway, so you download the picture and you print it out on uh, eight and a half by eleven, like a regular printer. Okay, this is what we got. Wrong side. Uh, anyways, uh, so we have the two images, left and right, or right and left, whichever way you're facing, right? Uh, and uh, we're going to like tape that up there and put a, a transfer paper like this. 
uh, dark gray transfer paper you can get. And you put it behind it, right? And then you just trace it on. Right? If you don't have transfer paper, you can use a number two pencil on the back of it and just scrub it in. And then, um, and then trace it from there. And, and the pencil will transfer to the canvas. But we want to transfer this image onto the canvas. Now you don't you don't see the the, in, the the sheath right there. So what I did is I made another one. I traced that onto another piece of paper and came up with this. Yeah, came up with that now. But anyways, then you would take these two together, right? And you can see that I added the feathers here, but when you first trace it on, don't trace the feathers. All right, we want to do those freehand after the fact. Um, that's there just for visual reference to help you out. So we're just going to be tracing the skull and uh, this piece with uh, transfer paper. Or if you know how to draw, you just draw it directly or pre-draw on a, on a uh, piece of paper and transfer it however you want to do it, right? But anyways, I went ahead and did that. And this is what we got is a skull. And now we have the image on the canvas. We got to think about color. Um, the, the original image is kind of like a bleached white. I was like, I don't want that, you know. So I was thinking maybe toward the browns, like the ochres, a dingy white, brownish white, that kind of color. You got to think of like a uh, like a middle tone, all right, that we're going to do the skull with. And toward the browns where I'm going. You can do any color you want, like you can do purple, whatever, but it's got to be a middle tone so you can go lighter and darker with it. You know, so you can like push it back with shadow, pull it out with highlight, right? So we're going to put middle tones first on the entire paint. So I went through my paints, kind of went through it and say, see what I got. I was thinking of burnt sienna is good. Um, warm brown. And I have a burnt umber, which is kind of a cooler brown, a little bit dirtier. So I was thinking uh, burnt sienna for the warm brown for the leather and the burnt umber for the skull, maybe. And then I was looking at for highlights, well, we have, uh, or for middle tone, excuse me, maybe a yellow ochre. I didn't have any, but I had a golden sunset, which looks like yellow ochre. You know, compared to yellow, um, maybe. Then I ran across this. Ooh, metallic royal gold. That's the ticket. And in a wise, immortal words of Monty Python. Now for something completely different. Anyways, um, okay. So we're going to use. Metallic gold as the middle tone. Of course, you got the black, the black and the white. I always have to have black and white. The eyes, I was thinking, uh, ooh, red. Yeah, fiery red eyes. It's a bowl, thinking red <laughs> coming through there. And the background, he wanted a blue, but it's got to be like a, in, a, in a dark blue. So we're going to do some black in the background and leave some white areas. Let that dry as an undercoat for um, ultramarine blue. Yeah, and it's a real transparent blue too. And so whatever's white will look like a bright blue, whatever's black will look like a dark blue. I have very little left, but I do have a tube of ultramarine blue, thick body acrylic. So I can use that uh, as well. All right, so we've got our colors here. Let's get started. Right underneath, I do have a styrofoam plate to paint on. And the brushes I'm going to use, 
I just got a handful here. Uh, three different flats. There's uh, one, two, maybe three. Yeah, here we go. We have like a, uh, just a three quarter inch flat. I'm gonna be using this a lot. Um, half inch flat and quarter inch flat, small. And we got some round brushes. This is a number 10 round, a number five round, a little bit skinnier. That's not a round. That's it. Get around, I get around, we get around, round, 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 I get around, I get around, around town. Okay, never mind. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, number 10 round, number five round, and a script liner, which is like a really super skinny round, right? Okay, these come in handy. Usually I use these chip brushes. Uh, inch and a half and an inch, but I don't think I'll need it for this particular painting. Alright, uh, so first thing I want to do is be putting in the uh, the middle tone, right? We're doing middle tones. So I want to do the skull middle tone with the gold. I'm going to go ahead and use the umber for the horn. And maybe the, uh, the, the burnt umber and maybe the uh, yellow ochre golden sunset or maybe the highlights of, of the horn part uh, the burnt sienna the warm brown for this leather piece right here and you've got some uh, red markings right here yeah. so we'll, we'll just jump in and see what happens right so it's all middle tones probably got shadow all over it try not to get shadow all right first thing we got uh, metallic gold. Give it a good shape. And pour some in our. And I'm going to pour the colors as we need them because it does dry fast. And this way you can um, pour it, then use it immediately before it gets tacky. Alright? And I also got this other camera as a microphone, so let me see if that helps. I want to pick up some of this gold. In fact, let me show you. Okay. A little bit of this gold right here. And let's put this as a middle tone. Just paint all this in nice and solid. 